Don't you seem awfully far away today? I tried to set the camera sort of back. I was like, I'll give myself some space. But now I've, I've, got, I've got like a whole table in front of me. I can, I can just lean and talk to you like, I feel like an interrogator. Because I'm not leaning over like this. I'm like, look, Harry, you and I both know the truth. So why don't you just save us some time and just admit to what you've done? Does that freak you out if your name's Harry? I'm also extra fluffy today. So um, I want to talk about um, sensory hell, which is a term I've learned mere moments ago. Um, I have like an Everest at the moment, uh, which uh, it's it's one of those things where at first it was, it was uh, I, I tried to record this video a few days ago. And I thought it was going to be a fun video. And the more I broached the subject, the more, the sort of the deeper it got. And um, the more, you know, it's one of those things where you, you open it up and you just start realising there's more and more there than what you thought. Um, so to start, I guess I'll start f with the end which is <laughs> my destination right now. Um, so there is a band that I like a lot. It's one of my favourite bands in the world, easily in my top five. And they're called Praying Mantis. Praying Mantis are a... Um, see, they're a British band that have existed for Yonks. Uh, and Yonks is a long time, if you don't know. Um, they are... It's about, I think, 40 years. Um, I think they, they passed their 40 year anniversary. They're uh, old school. Let's see. They do more sort of album oriented rock, AOR music nowadays. And they've slowly transitioned to that over time from their, uh, their roots, which was the new wave of British heavy metal. So it's that old school heavy metal. And then they've Transmission through now. I'm a huge fan of the new wave of British heavy metal, and these guys are legends. That they are, um, they're, they're you know, I mean, they've had three former members of Iron Maiden in them, um, including as uh, Paul Diano, Clive Burr, and uh, Dennis Stratton. And, um, like that's, I mean, not, not, I'm not saying that makes them good, I'm just saying that's how close they were to sort of the, the, the core uh, scene of new, the new wave of British heavy metal. And um, it turns out that um, the two brothers behind them, or at least at least to my knowledge one of them, lives here in Hastings, which I, I literally had no idea. <laughs> All right, then. Um, so it, it turns out my, uh, uh, my ex, her current partner knows them uh, I think he's done like done some work for them stuff like that uh, and it turns out the chap teaching me guitar Dan who I've talked to also knows him um, in fact they played together the other night uh, like on a whim uh, uh, and um, yeah Dan sort of says to him um, it's a, a Tino is the, the guy's name um, the, the Tino Troy one of the Troy brothers from Prey and he says um he says, you know, I've got, I've got a mate, Giles, who's a big fan of, of Prey and Mantis. And, you know, like like you would, you know, it's like, well, we, we, we got a gig in Hastings ne next month. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> come and see us, you fool. He didn't say you fool. He's a very nice man, and he wouldn't say that. Um, but, oh, God, it, it's, it's disturbing that when one of your favourite brands just come and see us my reaction is oh god and you know to analyse why I'm feeling like that um, I have to it, the, like I said there begins the odyssey of, um, of of you know why I feel like that what I'm feeling Do is that because I don't want to go when I do want to go, I really want to meet the guy, and and, and I want to see see Prey and Mantis live. Like, who wouldn't want to see their favorite band live? But I do have a history of um, not enjoying live music, and this is a, a really difficult thing for me to to um, look into 
it, because it kind of hurts a bit, if I'm honest. I mean, I, I am a heavy metal fan. I like heavy metal music. And it's always been very, very, very difficult for me to um, uh, to go and see bands I like live. And to, you know, you, you're, you, the, the, the fear is that you go there and... It would just make me unhappy. It would make me feel worse. I mean, this this um, gig, the, the the mission, by the way, the mission at hand is to go and see Play Pray Mantis live. I am going to see Pray Mantis live. Um, there's just a lot of work to do, like mentally and and. Um, but this is like a, a huge milestone when it comes to. Um, you know the, the the very revelation of autism and the consideration of it and the difficulties it brings me. This is like one of those things where suddenly uh, an impossible has been made possible simply with some understanding. Um, because it's you know to, this follows on from what I was saying in my previous video about um, social anxiety versus. Um, autism you know one of them is something to do with how your brain physically works and the other one is to do with trauma and so when you're coming uh, into contact with uh, barriers that are not created by trauma and you are trying to treat them like they are sooner or later you're going to take it out on yourself because you'll get frustrated you know the um a, a lot of the time when it comes to blaming oneself that's caused by exasperation and really what's happened when you get exasperated like that is it, you know when you think about like when you're trying to help someone out like someone that you genuinely want to help um and uh you try it, you know, every single thing under the sun, and sooner or later, you're going to start thinking disrespectfully about them. Not because you're a bad person, but because you've ran out of gas, you're on empty, you know? And I feel like that, that can happen when you're trying to encourage yourself to better yourself, but going the wrong way about it, and not realising that you're, um, you know, you're, you're just so... Uh, you're coming at it from a completely different angle that, that outright will not work. And, and I think this goes back to the uh, the A-bomb video I did, the the, the first uh, video I did about autism, um, where I, you know, I referenced the, uh, gave the um, analogy of a door that, that can't open. And when you discover that you have autism or you are on the spectrum, it's a confirmation that that door doesn't open and that's okay. You know, you can take another route around to, to get in. You, you don't have to go through the door. But until you know that, until you have that knowledge, you keep trying to open the door and you blame yourself and you're horrible to yourself for not being able to open that door. Um, and... I, I I I go back to in my mentally when I think about this uh, you know, gig and moving forward and and and, and going to see Praying Mantis. I think about the last gig that I went to, which was uh, about eighteen years ago, um, and that would have been Bloodstock, which is a heavy metal festival here in the UK. Um, I believe it's open air now. I might, it might. I haven't looked it up for ages. I believe it's open air. Uh, but when I went, it was um, what do you call a festival when it's not open air? No air. <laughs> Airless. <laughs> I I don't know. It was indoor. Oh, that that <laughs> that one will do. And it was an indoor festival, um, and. You know, the thing that stands out to me the most about Bloodstock is that I I went there two years uh, with a bunch of friends and um, I, I, I have fond memories of it. I remember, you know, when we took the car journey up there, um, I, I remember, you know, there's lots of 
you know, I, I remember one time we went, uh, we were on our way out of the parking lot on one of the days, because it was a few days uh, festival, and uh, we'd just seen uh, Children of Bodden, um, and uh, the the album Hate Crew Death Roll, we were really into it, and we were on our way out of the, the, the parking lot, and um, we were just playing it on the... Um, on the car radio, we, we couldn't get out of the parking lot because all the other metalheads that were left leaving the festival started a mosh pit in front of the car. Um, I, I remember I, I met um, Steve Williams from Power Quest. I, I think he, he I think he lives nearby as well. Like, but I think that's Eastbourne, something like that. Um, but I remember like just talking to him for fucking ages like <laughs> for a really long time and um herman lee from dragon force i remember asking him how long it took to grow his hair and he said if you got eight, eight eight years spare which is quite interesting because i've been growing my hair about eight years and it's nowhere near as long as his but i think he trims his <laughs> like there was a signing session like we met we met uh Oh, so many different bands and stuff. Oh, and Blaze Bailey from um, X Iron Maiden, um, Nightwish. Uh, but the, the 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 thing is, Saxon. Just want to throw that one in there because Saxon are awesome. Um, the thing is, I cannot remember. And this is the clincher. When I, I tell you, I remember everything else. Gamma Ray. Throw them on too. I remember everything. Apart from the the bands on stage, <laughs> watching the bands on stage, you know what songs they played, what they did, and and uh, the only two memories I have of the bands actually being on stage, actually performing, um, was Children of Bottom and a band called Balance of Power. And I knew that because I, I, I balance the power stick in my head because uh, I only knew um, the song Heathen Machine. And I was like, man, I really hope they play Heathen Machine or I'm fucked. Uh, and they came out with it. And so, so uh, you know, I was like, ah, thank God. I'll leave now. I've heard the one song I know. Um and I remember Children of Bodom because my girlfriend at the time fell asleep during their gig, <laughs> which I, I, I thought was pretty impressive. I mean, like, but the thing is, we were in the the, um, the, the seating on the second floor, um, and um, and uh, yeah, she was just sitting in the the, the seat, just like. While, while they were they were doing their thing, and um, it, it's interesting how the things that I I can remember about the bands being on stage, uh, a lot of it, like the only times I remember anything from the or you know being among the audience, was when I remember more of what the audience did. And that, that's that sort of I guess that's sort of me watching my ass really. I remember there was like there was one bloke with really long hair, really long hair. Like he he makes Herman Lee look like a skinhead, and um, he was like headbanging back and forth, and everyone was getting really really annoyed with him because he was swinging his massive hair around, and it kept going in people's drinks, and um, and so <laughs> in the end he swings it back. And one of the guys that like next to me just sticks his whole pint into the guy's hair. Like up behind him, just the guy head bangs forward. And he, his pint glass is empty because it's all been absorbed into the guy's hair. He didn't notice. I was sort of like, that's, that's remarkable. But I remember that. Um, I remember a really, really fat bloke passed out like at the bottom of the room. Right at the back of the room. Just like laying there in like he was wearing like camo tr camo trousers and like a uh as a string vest <laughs> like he looked like someone had nicked on his clothes while he was asleep and um and oh yeah there was a band called bum snogger 
<laughs> that was their actual name. And I always remember um, the speaker saying, if you'd like to make your way to the Darwin Suite, we have Bumsnogger. That's exactly how he said it. And just everybody cracked up laughing. Uh, and I talked to, I remember some, um, I think he was Norwegian, and he, and he started talking to me about um, Tyre's boobs from Nightwish. And we had, they had a conversation with me for about, about 10 minutes about it. Um, and... It was kind of really awkward because I think she was in earshot. Like we were in a queue to to, to meet Nightwish. Um, that was kind of uncomfortable to say the least. But um, the the whole thing comes down to. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. I'm, I'm, but it, it's it, it's it's. Do you know? I I, I say I'm getting sidetracked, but there's a there is a, a point as for why I'm consulting this information. It's because... <coughs> it's, it's because... The... The reason as to why I retain some of this stuff, and I can't remember them being on stage, there's an issue with um, what I'm reading about called sensory hell, which is just a general influx of senses... Um, and it's weird because I hear the phrase and I hear it described and it's it's it it clicks with me. And so I end up reading and watching more about it and it's just clicking more and more and more. Just that feeling of like say like you're at a pub and like or a cafe or something and someone just starts setting their band up. You know, like you're minding your own bloody business and then and you can hear like the buzzing of amplifiers and the <laughs> of the speakers and stuff like that and you're just like you're like how did I get here why is this happening to me like a moment ago I was just having a nice chill drink and all of a sudden I'm annoyed and it's a different kind of you know like people sort of go well you know you might just be in your conversation you don't like hearing um you know you're trying to have a conversation there and there's a load of noise happening and it's like it's a different kind of frustration um because although i might say something and go well, that's annoying or something like that it is still very much inwards it's an inwards collapse and that's the difference it's like i was talking about the differences between anxiety and and um autism like anxiety is is sending it out anxiety is is worried about what's around you whilst you know the the sensory issues associated with autism they're more inward you're collapsing in on yourself you know you can argue that that one is an explosion the other is an implosion um and it, it's like this this weird sort of numbness like when i think about going to see prairie man doesn't think about what my reservations are about that um I have to sort of peel the onion in, in terms of all my reservations and I have to lay them out in front of me and be like, right, that one's anxiety, this one's autism, that one's anxiety, this one's autism. I have to like sift through them and see what they are, what they're about is so that they can be treated appropriately. Like, for example, uh, if I go and see a band and the band is making... Uh, you know, an incredible amount of noise, and I feel absolutely overloaded. That isn't anxiety. It, it may feel like it may manifest itself as anxiety, but it's not the root in it. Isn't isn't some kind of trauma that's caused that? You know that there there is something mechanical in my brain that in that moment does not like that. It's not a. It's not an ick. It, it's not. You know. It's it's not a. Um, it, it, it's not a sort of a, a, a pet peeve. It, it's it's there's something mechanical in my brain that does not like what is going on and would really appreciate it if I took evasive action. <laughs> in 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 which case that you know it could be as simple as sitting down. It could be as simple, exactly the same as going back to that example, going to that gig and and, and finding myself. When I sit among the uh, the seating, I can remember the bands that I saw from the seating, which uh, in particular was Children of Bottom and um, and A Balance of Power. 
Um, the the only reason I remember Bumsnocker is because of their ridiculous name and the fact that people were uh, throwing um, cough sweets onto the stage because they, they were one of those sort of bands. And uh, at the time of that gig, um, there really weren't a lot of bands like that performing at Bloodstock. You know, a lot of it was, this was during like the power metal phase and stuff like that. So we, we didn't really like the sort of screamy people. Um, I still don't. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's it, like going to apply the wrong uh, remedy or, or treatment or, or course of action. Sorry, my nose is incredibly itchy for no reason at all. Um, it can be hazardous because uh, that exasperation, I think it, it sets a if you if you try and help yourself going about the wrong way and you and you're not considering what actually should be done, you can end, end up exasperated with yourself, you blame yourself, and then you associate that horrible feeling with that um with that event or, or with that, you know, like, like I, I, you know, hear all the live me in the past, you know, you hear live music and you hear this sensory overload, this absolute sensory hell. And you're telling yourself that it's anxiety. So, so you're telling yourself it's something that can be, you know, treated or, or something like that. And so you then put the blame of not treating it on yourself when, it, you know, it, when it, if 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 it is autism, it's the 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 way to resolve that is a lot more mechanical. You know, and I'm not done. I guess that's sort of right riffing with the physical nature of it. It's more like I'm overloaded right now. I will go and sit down. And uh, but I, I think as well, ironically, the like the more I think about it, the more I'm sort of like, well, if I apply that logic and that logic is in my head i think it's um easy to estimate that i'll probably be better in the crowd anyway like the 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 likelihood of being overloaded will be less because i have the knowledge that i can be overloaded if that makes any sense you know, it, it, it's like, if you understand, I mean, so much of, uh, of, of uh, why autism is, you know, it, it's resolved so many issues of mine. It's because it, it's like a, uh, a huge platform of understanding and, and, you know, sort of mysteries that you live through and, and you're sort of like, oh, that's why that happens. Oh, that's why that happens. And you, you it's like you're, you're, you're it's like someone's taken away like the toolbox that you were using to try and fix everything and sort of handed you some specialist tools instead. So now every sort of brick wall that you've ever hit um, now has to be reassessed. And I feel like with this, I'm going through this massively right now. Like this is really, um, I, I go back and I, I think about my life and I think about, things that have been said to me, things that have been done, the way people have reacted, people that have lost their temper with me, people that have been nice to me, people that have been mean to me, you know, things that I can't do, things that I, I want to do, things that I don't want to do, things that I think I don't want to do, but actually do want to do. I'm just sort of masking to save face for the fact that I, I don't understand why I, I don't want to do something that I do want to do. Uh, you know, it, and, and suddenly like, you have to reassess all of that and um you know it's hard it's hard to know who you are after all of that um or it, it's easy depending on how, how you feel about it i mean with me I, I feel like i'm sort of learning to um To, you know, I said, I said this actually to to my social prescriber today. Uh, the the uh, I, I feel like I'm I'm learning to be more autistic. 
not because you know I'm faking it or, or anything like that, but because there's so much masking, so much masking that that it's just. Um, I mean, I I, I, I dare say it, it is what I've been trying to do all these years, but you don't you don't have it doesn't have a name, so you can't call upon it, you know, and. Um, I don't know. I mean, the the uh, I ha I have to sort of think about the yeah you know, that going to this gig and, and visualize all the things that I'm worried about and separate them off one by one and and, and sort of be like this belongs to that this belongs to that like for example I think I mentioned this in the video before there is uh, a trauma based concern which was when I was a lot younger. Um, I mentioned before I had there was a horrible assault when I was about uh, 15 something like that uh, and that tra traumatized me very badly and I have a very very hard time going out after dark um, still to this day because uh, you know and, and again you know, you, you're traumatized by the term why because there was no explanation for it whatsoever it was a absolutely unprovoked attack um, if it was, I've always said this, if it was, if there was a motivation, I would have felt a hell of a lot better, you know, it's, it's, it sounds like an odd thing to say, but, you know, if, if I said something I didn't like, or if I, I don't know, done something wrong to them, or if, or if they were mugging me, it sounds ridiculous, but I, I, cause then at least I can go, they were mugging me, that's why that happened, you know, um, I mean, there, if, you know, the evidence as to why it happened was was because I I have long hair. <laughs> they didn't like the fact that I was sort of a uh, heavy metal. This was back in the day of sort of like chav versus heavy metal, and um, you know, and, and I, I, it's it's uh, I, I I don't know, uh, but I think about you know I think about going to uh, you know a uh, going to I mean the gig is at a pub downtown. You know, I think of going downtown on a Friday night. You know, do is but that that's one of those things where understanding that um, I, I feel like understanding what's autistic has, has helped me understand what's what's to do with anxiety at the same time. You know, like um, like uh, I'm able to rationalise it as something irrational. Um, or, or, or at least I can identify what is rational about it in terms of where it comes from, identifying the pattern of concern. Um, you know, I think think about you know, going down there. I'm like, you know, well, how often do you, you know, do people really get beaten up in these things unprovoked? You know, uh, and it, it, it's sort of, um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like that is. A concern of mine that I can deal with uh, but like I said that's a very anxiety based thing so I have to take that and then put it aside then I have to consider the sensory thing um, and, uh, and I, I, sort of, I wonder sort of how much of my life is gonna turn into this just sort of picking apart things and sort of identifying where concerns have, have come from and how to do things differently um, but it's it's interesting. But I I, I guess I'll, I'll I'll probably leave this video here because I, I am starting to ramble. Um, but I want to check in on this subject again. Um, you know, <laughs> make a video. I saw praying mantis, um, which is just that's just going to be so cool. It's just going to be so cool just to see praying mantis. But I think it's going to be cool to embrace myself as who I am and and that I tell you something that makes uh going something like this feel a little bit easier because I don't know I I, I feel I feel like it's like a like my real face feels like a new face that I just sort of want to show off and um it's a, you know it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to enjoy myself and to, to meet some people who, who are truly legendary, you know. Just seems like a good deal. But, uh... 
<coughs> I was about to say time will tell, but it's not. Um, it's not up in the air. It is going to happen. Right. Uh, I, I said, I'm sorry, it's just a bit of a, a rambly one, but it's like it's like I'm doing feng shui inside my brain. <laughs> I hope you guys are very, very well. I'll talk to you soon. See you later. <laughs>